Hello, this is Organization with Olu. Today we're going to talk about the martial learner condition. Stick around. I think you're going to like what I've got for you. Right now, what I'm going to do is share my screen. Hello, we're going to go straight into martial learner. Now, for some reason, students find this a little bit complex. I'm not sure why, but hopefully at the end of, by the end of this video, it will be a lot clearer for, for you. So we're going to start off straight away, though, with a, a task. Okay, I want it. I want you to, um, it's a retrieval exercise because we've talked about depreciation, we've talked about the J-curve effect, and we've talked about elasticity. Now, I want you to bring it all together. See if you can bring it all together. All the information that you've learned, see if you can bring it all together and write an essay, a 15-mark essay. So explain why a depreciation of the pound appears to have little effect on the UK's deficit in the current account, especially in the short term. Include the Marshall Learner and the Jacob effect in your answer. 15 marks. Guys, have a go at this. It's really, really important for you to be able to understand depreciation, the Marshall Learner condition, and the Jacob effect, and actually put it in one answer. Okay. So, right now, we're going to start off with what is price elasticity of demand. Okay. So, what, what is price elasticity of demand? Price elasticity of demand is the degree of responsiveness of demand to a change in price. The degree of responsiveness to of demand to a change in price. If the price changes, how are you going to respond? Are you going to buy more of the product? Are you going to buy less of the product? Or are you going to buy the same amount as you normally would have bought? Okay, so that's the way you respond is your responsiveness. So we're going to look at the degree of responsiveness, okay? And what I'll do, I'll give you an example. Hopefully with this example, it will be quite clear, okay? So I just want to assume that you are in a, um, you, you, you're self-employed, you sell trainers, okay? So you've got one, you've, you've actually got just one pair, uh, not one pair of trainers, one type of trainers. All the trainers are all identical, okay? It's the same price. Now, what you find is that, what you found, basically, I should say, is that um, you're not getting many customers. So you decide to lower the price. So let's let's do this, okay? Let's, apply, let's imagine that you decide to drop the price by 5%, okay? So you're going to have, let's say, your quantity over P, okay? P equals the price. You've lowered it by 5%. You've dropped it by 5%, okay? Now, you do this because you want your customers to respond really positively, to really have a kind of strong response and purchase a lot more, okay? But what happens is that they, they purchase just 5% more. The quantity they purchase is just 5% more. As you can see, you dropped your prices by 5%, they purchase 5% more. You haven't made any profit. Naturally, in actual fact, we call this unitary elasticity in other words it the price goes down or goes up and it, it equals to the quantity demanded okay it's equal to the quantity demanded so it doesn't make any difference whatsoever so that's what you call unitary elasticity it comes to one okay now i want you to imagine this situation you still you've still got the same situation here but you have a different result this time what happens is that you lower your price by five percent and what actually happens is that you have an increase of 8%, 8%. That will give you 1.6. Now, what is the relevance of 1.6? Now, the relevance of 1.6 is that we have a range of what is what shows elasticity and what doesn't show elasticity, how responsive demand is, okay? So what, what is 1.6 in the reading? So let's clear this out. Now, in... In terms of determining elasticity, 0 to 1 is inelastic. Obviously, it's different degrees of inelasticity. The closer you are to 0, the, the more inelastic you are, okay? Um, 0 is perfect elasticity, perfectly inelastic. Sorry, not perfect elasticity, perfectly inelastic. In other words, no, the, the price doesn't bring about any change in demand at all. doesn't matter what the price is, the demand still stays the same. So you have from zero to one. Remember, one represents unitary elasticity, okay? So from zero, you have different degrees of elasticity, okay? Now, this is really, really important in terms of 
the larger, the global market. What we're trying to do, if you think about depreciation, you're trying to, when you have depreciation, what you want is your exports are going to become more attractive. So you want people to purchase a lot more of your exports. So the Marshall Learning Condition says, which I'm going to write for you here, is the price elasticity of demand of exports, so the PED of exports plus PED of imports should be greater than one. In other words, it should be elastic. Basically, what that means is that if there's depreciation and your exports are cheaper, people from other countries should look at that and think, wow, UK is really, really cheap. We're going to buy a lot of exports. And you want them to be very responsive in a positive way and purchase a lot of your exports. And if they purchase a lot of your exports, that more and more money is coming in. OK, now, as your exports are become cheaper, imports will be more expensive. Again, you want them to have um, a, a, um, an elastic response to very expensive imports. Imports are now more expensive. You want people to say, oh, you know what, I'm not going to buy any more imports, or I'm going to reduce the amount of imports I'm going to buy, or I'm going to buy UK products instead. So if people respond, if they're responsive to an increase in imports, they would reduce the demand. And therefore, you're going to have less money going out for imports. So more money is coming in because people are very responsive to your exports. Less money is going out because people are, again, responsive to high prices of your imports. So that's what the Marshall Learner Condition says. If the price elasticity of demand of exports plus, plus price elasticity of demand of imports has to be greater than one, and therefore the Marshall Learner Condition will be met. That's the first stage of potentially your current account improving. Obviously, then we have the J-curve effect, but we're just concentrating on the Marshall Learner Condition. So they have to be elastic. In other words, you have they have to people have to be responsive to a drop in the price of exports or an increase in the price of imports. Okay, just try and imagine yourself. How would you respond to when your when things you like buying has fallen? The, the price is, is is reduced. Are you going to buy more? Are you going to respond in a very positive way? And if it if it's if you respond in a positive way, you purchase more, then you it said your demand is elastic. It's elastic, very responsive to a change in price. So hopefully, guys, you, you understand this. It's just applied, it's the same with you, just apply it to the global context. Okay, it's what we do every single day. Now let, let's think of some of the things that are actually quite inelastic. For example, think of oil. Oil is relatively inelastic. We talked about readings from zero to one that represents in an in elasticity oil will probably be around 0 0.2 to 0 0.28 0 0.2 very low level of elasticity simply because people need to fill their cars i know there, there was a time there was no um petrol and people started um getting jerry cans and collecting uh, petrol and there was this particular lady that actually used the plastic bag can you imagine um, but in most cases, we don't do that. We don't store petrol. We just buy it and fill, it, fill our car. It doesn't matter what the price is, we just fill our car. Think about transport. They're going to fill the trains up. They're going to fill the buses up. So if there's an increase in price or a decrease in price, it doesn't really change demand. So that's why it's considered as relatively, in, well, not relatively inelastic, highly inelastic. Because 0 0.2 is very inelastic. So what we're trying to do, guys, is create a situation where the, um, the elasticity of demand, price elasticity of demand is elastic. In other words, people are going to respond. And if people respond, they're going to buy more of our exports and we're going to buy less expensive imports and therefore potentially the current account will improve. So hopefully, guys, you understand this and I'm going to do a lot more of these videos. So hopefully any question on Marshall Learning Condition, you should be able to smash it, okay? Thank you very much. Please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.